Hey everyone, welcome back to Def Parkour. In this video, I want to talk about uh, why I chose React and Node uh, to build valence. Uh, and by the way, yes, I did use uh, React and Node to build valence. In case you didn't know, I recently started a startup called Valence. Valence is a ticket tracker specifically built for software engineers. And that's what I'll be talking about a lot on the channel over the next few months at least. You can check out Valence for yourself at valence.bparks.dev. And we'd also love to hear any feedback that you have for us. Uh, there will be links in the description both to the main site, valence.bparks.dev, and for a way to contact us with your feedback. Thank you in advance. And now, back to the video. Now, and this might come as a surprise to some of you who have been around the channel for a while, um, because one of my most popular videos is uh, why Rust is awesome and why I'm planning to use it for a bunch of um, a bunch of future projects. It turns out I'm not using Rust all that much right now. Don't get me wrong, Rust is awesome. You should definitely check it out. It's definitely worthwhile for exactly what I was looking to use it for when I made that video, um, but not right for Valence. So there were two main drivers behind the decision to use React and Node. One was that I wanted to use a language that was familiar to me. And two was that I wanted to avoid writing the same code twice as much as possible. Now, what I mean by that is most often when we're writing a, uh, a web-based application where we have kind of a browser application, typically written in JavaScript, and then a backend API written in, well, whatever, you've got options there. Um, you end up writing the same types, or even if you're not writing in a type language, if you're just writing straight JavaScript, you end up writing some sort of type checking code or shape manipulation code both places. There are a couple ways around this. One is you can use code generation, and one is you could just use the same language on both client and server. I did not want to get into code generation. Um, not that it's bad. Code generation is awesome in the right time and place. Um, but for this, if I can just use the same language on both client and server, I don't have to do any code generation. And since I, I like using TypeScript anyway, I can have the same types on both client and server. So that that's kind of getting ahead of ourselves here, but realistically I ended up with three options. One is JavaScript, or more realistically TypeScript, you know, React and Node, which obviously I, I ultimately went with. The other option is uh, C Sharp. I'm pretty familiar with C Sharp. Uh, I've been writing C Sharp most of my career, uh, and C Sharp recently, or Microsoft recently came out with something called Blazor. Uh, the idea is basically you write uh, C Sharp Razor components and compile them to WebAssembly, and then you have C Sharp in WebAssembly running on your browser, and you have C Sharp running in ASP.NET running on the server. C Sharp both places, everything is super happy magical. Oh, and in their vision of it, uh, it communicates with uh, uh, SignalR, so WebSockets. Uh, so basically, you, you imagine your app as a single web application, a single Razor web application, and it compiles and runs the, the front end components on the browser and then seamlessly communicate to the back end. Pretty cool technology if you want to do that sort of thing. And there are a couple other uh, versions of it, but that's uh, probably what I would have gone with. Second option is, uh, or I guess the third option, we're up to the third option, is um, Rust actually compiles to WebAssembly. You can, you can compile it to WebAssembly. And there is a framework, I believe it's called U, um, where you can basically write, it looks like React components, but you're writing them in Rust. Uh, it generates HTML, and uh, you can use that to communicate with a backend server. As far as I know, it doesn't use anything like WebSockets or SignalR under the hood like, like Blazor does, uh, so you would still be fetching you know, it'd just be normal API calls. You could do GraphQL, you could do REST, that sort of thing. Um, that piece is up to you, but you can still end up writing the uh, the UI components in Rust. You can write the backend in Rust. Rust both places, same language, same types. That achieves the goal. 
So ultimately, I went with React and Node because after I narrowed uh, my choices down to those three candidates uh, based on wanting to use the same language both on client and server, I went with the one that I knew the best, which is React and Node. Um, not that I don't know C Sharp really, really well, as I mentioned, I do. I, I've used C Sharp a long time. What I don't know very well is Blazor. Blazor and Razor are still a little new to me. Um, whereas React and Node, I've been doing them a lot over the last few years. So those are kind of fresh in my mind. And when I want to uh, spend as little time coding and spend as much time getting in front of customers and getting my product in front of customers, I'm going to go with the thing that I can spend the least amount of time writing and just you know focus on getting it out in front of customers. Write a little bit of code, talk to customers. Write a little bit of code, talk to customers. That's been my cadence for the last few weeks. And ultimately, that's why I went with React and Node. I hope you enjoyed this video. hope this gives, gave you a little bit of, of insight into why I made the decision that I made. If you like this video, go ahead and hit that thumbs up button. Uh, remember to subscribe if you're not already subscribed. And uh, I hope you, hope you are as excited about this journey as I am. Uh, leave notes in the comments and uh, let me know what you want to hear about next. Thanks for watching.